Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it's time to start sheathing the walls. Um, I've chosen to sheathe them vertically. Um, I think you have the option of it doing either, uh, even all the information I look up. says you can either do it kind of horizontally or vertically. On a floor, generally, with if these were uh, on a roof, if these were rafters, or on a floor, if these were floor joists, you'd want the, the sheathing to go across it to give it a little more stability. But um, in this case, they say you can either go vertical or horizontal. I'm choosing, choosing to go vertical because that means I don't have to make a cut from top to bottom. And where I leave a little bit of a gap for expansion of each of the panels, um, that gap will actually fall on a stud. So there won't actually be any, any kind of space through from the inside to the outside. Whereas if I laid it horizontally, there'd, there'd be a gap right here. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal, but anyway, just because of the size of my building and everything, it makes sense to just use a whole sheet to go from top to bottom, at least on this front wall. Now on the sides and back, I'll have to cut some, but, but that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm gonna fit a piece, which I've already kind of set it up there. Um, a little trick, if you're doing this by yourself, is to throw a few nails down in the, the floor assembly here. And those are basically, I can set, I can set my piece of OSB on those nails and hold it in place. So I actually measured down, you know, eight feet, which is what this, this piece of OSB is, and set it on those nails so that I could hold it into place and it fit pretty tight. And what I did was I, I drew the outline of the door. So I'll get an exact match to what the, uh, what the door cutout's gonna be. So I'm gonna cut that before I put it up, but I've, I fit it into place to draw that. Um, generally, I think it's recommended to kind of just put the sheathing up nail it in place and then cut it out from the inside while it's in place. Um, usually with something like a Sawzall, a, a reciprocating saw. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of cutting with that. So I am going to fit them into place, draw them, and then cut them out and then put them back. I think that should be just as accurate. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. So I'm gonna cut this first panel for the door and get going. On some of these I'm already noticing, right over here for example, um, the panel doesn't fall right on the middle of the stud as it should. Turns out some of those studs can be just bowed the tiniest bit and that'll be enough to kind of push it off so that there's nothing to nail into for both of the panels as they meet on that stud. They should meet on the middle of that stud. Um, so a solution for that, if it is indeed, I mean if the stud is wrong, the stud's wrong, but, but um, the solution here, if I've just got a little bit of bow, is just to throw a little piece of blocking in between the two studs to kind of push them apart to put that stud where it really should be if it were perfectly straight. So I'm gonna have to do that a little bit to get these studs to fall where they need to so that the, the panels can nail into them. I need to move my wall bracing because it's in the way. It might be hard to see, but it's sticking out there. So it's in the way. Well, there you go without the window cut out. Now it's just a bunch of nails, like I said, around the edge of every sheet, every six inches a nail. And along the studs in between, in the field they would call it, in the middle of a panel, every 12 inches apart. And of course around any windows and doors and anything, you treat it like an edge of a panel, so six inches. Um, and I'll cut out the window after the fact from inside. Thing to be careful of when you're nailing here is not to miss the studs behind. So you'll see as I, as I nail these in, I'll probably check behind to make sure I haven't missed the stud. Same thing with a roof and a floor. 
uh, had to do the same thing, just making sure you're not missing the, the material behind it. I'll try and mark all the studs with a chalk line first. That assumes that they're straight, so I still might miss, but I'll mark the, the stud locations with a chalk line so I'm not as likely to miss. So here I am putting the sheathing on the backside. Um, I've done all three other walls. You can see I cut the door out. I haven't cut the windows out yet, but I'm just tacking these sheathing strips up at the corners for now until I get all the way across here. Just wanted to give you a little taste of kind of some things you can do if you want to do this stuff yourself. Not that I don't have friends to help. I got plenty of friends that are willing to help and I appreciate it, but uh, sometimes this stuff moves kind of slow and I'm thinking things through and so sometimes it's it's best to work alone if I'm moving kind of slow and making a lot of measurements and thinking about stuff a lot. So every once in a while, uh, you got to put some of this stuff together yourself. And one of the things I came up with here, now of course it depends on your situation, but you can see down at the bottom, well, number one, I've got this kind of two by four is just kind of leaning, pushing against the, the panel so it doesn't fall down. Because there, there are no nails in this panel right now, this last panel. I just put it up. Um, and at the bottom, I've been doing this all around the shed, basically just using, I've used either cinder blocks or these blocks here, these landscaping blocks, and basically some shims, you know, either a two by four or even just small little strips of wood and just, just kind of jamming them in there until you get everything up snug tight. So, so on this one, I just needed one little shim there. And on this other one, I needed a shim, you know, a strip and a little kind of triangle shim in there to push it up a little bit. And the idea is I'm trying to get everything as snug at the top as I can. So for example, that's my stopping point. Now this one's real tight. This one's real tight. This one actually has a tiny gap, but you know, there's a little bit of inconsistency in those rafters because I had to notch them out. So you can only get kind of tied up to one of them at least. And then the other two are kind of a crapshoot whether you get them super tight, but that's pretty tight. And these little cracks, you know, they're still signing to come over this. Um, and I'll even be, I think I'll be sheathing up in these gaps. Even I'll have to put some nailers up in there to do that. But just an idea of how I've been working around the shed because I haven't shown a lot of details because it's been a little slow of me working around on the sheathing. But here's some of what I've been doing, just kind of propping things up and nailing these things in place. So I'm gonna continue until I finish here, and then there'll be some cleanup, like I said. I think I'll do some extra sheathing in some of the little cracks and crevices because I wanna cover the whole thing with siding as much as possible, so, and get up in, in all those nooks and crannies. So let's see how that goes. Of course, house wrap comes before that, so the step after this is house wrap. So here's the wall sheathing just about done. Um, I just need to cut out the windows. I've got the door cut out there, but none of the windows. Um, the, as you can see, the roofing panels arrived today uh, and some trim to go along the sides uh, or the edges. But here is a look at all the sheathing. Took me a couple days, had to kind of cut these One's on the side, you know, down the angle of the roof. But other than that, pretty straightforward. Just had to match up some of those angles. This backside will have two windows, one kind of over here and one over there. Same height as the windows in the front. You can see it comes down and overlaps a little bit onto the, the floor base there. There will be, let's see, house wrap will go next and then uh, siding. So just a, uh, what do you call it? LP smart side siding. It's kind of a wood, it's primed, wood paneling that's primed for painting. Uh, there's our roof. So I think I'll do the, uh, so I'll cut out these windows and then I'll do the house wrap to protect uh, this uh, OSB from any rain we might get, which we're getting some noise right now, Some rumbling there's a dark cloud there coming our way uh, i don't know if it's going to rain or not but 
The next step would be to get this, this wood protected. The roof is already protected with a paper, a synthetic underlayment. So it should be okay in the event of some rain, uh, but we'll go house wrap and then put the roofing material on just since we've got it. And then it'll be time for siding. Well, I guess windows after the house wrap, so, and then siding. So we're getting close. All right, so it's time to make some holes in this thing. There's one of our windows. Um, so there's a couple different ways to go about this. I haven't tried any of them, so I might try multiple ways. We'll see. We'll see how the first one goes and then we'll, we'll go from there. So the first way I'm going to try is by drilling holes from the inside, drilling holes in the corners so that I can then go outside and know where the corners of the window on the inside are of the frame and either doing chalk lines or just drawing between those holes drawing a line on the wall and cutting it out with a circular saw. I'm starting with that one from the outside. So I'm starting with that one first because I think the circular saw will make a pretty clean cut. So I just need to see how well I can get close to the, to the framing on the inside. Um, the other, if that doesn't go very well, the other way to go about it is to start, actually this would involve drilling holes at the corners as well, but then you're now cutting from the inside with a sawzall or reciprocating saw. So the blade, you hold it and the blade just kind of does that. So you can, what's nice about that is the blade's about six inches long, so it should reach from the inside, it should reach past the framing over here, that's three and a half inches deep before you even get to the, the sheathing. Um, but it should be able to cut through. I don't feel like that's gonna make a super clean cut, so that's why I'm trying the circular saw first, but we'll see how it goes. But either way, I'm going to start with holes at the corners. So the hard part is, again, because there's a three and a half inch two by four um, between the inside and the sheathing, you've got to have something deep enough to be able to kind of reach that corner. So I've actually got a three eighths inch drill bit right here. So I'm just going to get as close to the corner as I can. There's our holes. Let's go check outside. Okay, so here we are outside. Probably, I doubt you can pick it up on the camera, but um, yesterday when I was sheathing this wall, just to know where to skip nailing when I was nailing to the studs, I kind of drew on the outside where the window, where I believe the window is just by measuring, you know, because I know where it should fall in relation to the top plate and everything. So, so I actually drew the window on the outside so that I'd know where to skip nailing. Um, I got pretty close based on the holes I just drilled. Not exact, but real close. And I think I can use those lines as a guide. So I'm gonna try that just using those lines. So this is gonna start, the way this works, because I'm not starting from the end of a board like you normally would with a circular saw, it starts with what's called a plunge cut. I've never actually done this before, but the idea is, you know, you start the saw when you're kind of just angled away from the wood like this. And once the saw's running, you push it down into the wood. So I think if you do it slow, it should be fine. So let's give that a try. I think you have to, you have to pull up the guard to be able to do that plunge cut. So I was afraid of that. Um, my circular saw, my battery powered circular saw, um, kind of bogs down sometimes. I just don't know if it's just not powerful enough. Um, if the wood either binds up, it'll kind of stop, or with what I was just doing there, I guess the wood's tight enough that um, when I tried to kind of push it down through, it just bogged down. So I have a couple of options. One, I could go get my corded circular saw, which means I'd have to bring a generator up here for power. So I'm going to go try the other option I talked about, which was the uh, reciprocating saw from the inside because I have a battery powered reciprocating saw. Let's see how that works. All right, so let's give the reciprocating saw a try. The thing about that is it's got a pretty fat blade. So just to be able to get it started, I have to drill a pretty decent sized hole that that blade will fit into. So I'm gonna drill a bigger hole in the corners. Okay, so 
it seems like I'm learning a few different ways not to do this. Uh, that blade actually doesn't reach. This blade, as it goes in and out, isn't long enough to reach because I, I have to be up against that framing member there. So it's got to go three and a half inches before it even hits the sheathing. So it's not long enough to do that. So I'm going to take now my reciprocating saw outside. Okay, let's try this again. So like I said, the lines I drew the other day on the outside are pretty good. So I'm going to use those as a guide. One more problem. <laughs> the hole's not big enough. The, the, the blade has to actually fit inside that hole so I can get started. Okay, take, I don't know, 20? Now that I've drilled the hole big enough for the blade, let's see if I can cut this line. All right, I'm gonna check on the inside, see how I did. Looks pretty good from the inside, it's pretty close. Uh, Maybe I could clean it up a little bit afterwards, but I think it's pretty close. So let's cut all these out. That worked out pretty good. That, that cut a lot cleaner than I thought it would. Um, it's a little scary doing it from the outside and not being able to actually see the framing on the inside. I'd rather do it from the inside out, but I don't know if the answer is just a longer blade, but, uh, but that worked as long as you know where to cut. So drilling the holes and, and drawing lines between those holes would work, but like I said, I had already drawn the lines just for measurements and they were pretty close. So, it doesn't look like I cut the framing at all. And the hole I think is just right. So that's one down. Two more, we got three windows. All right, so I just wanna talk about something now that I thought I had kind of an idea what I was gonna do, but I'm changing my mind, I think. Um, for some reason, so this is the kind of the underside of the roof, right? This is the overhang. Um, and you know, right now, so I've done the sheathing, and you can see I've taken the sheathing up to the to the rafters. Basically, well, this is not a rafter; this is a blocking. But over here on this side, these are the rafters coming out. So I took the sheathing as tight up to the rafters as I could, and I had this notion that I would then uh, add more sheathing up into these cavities. You know, I did the blocking on the inside to to, to close the hole from inside to outside. But I still, just for aesthetics, you know, if I leave that, if I stop here and I do, say, my house wrap and my siding right now, and I just leave this the way it is, this is a little shelf here, basically, and I can just see that being birds' nests and, and critters and things like that. So that's not a great idea. So I had this notion that aesthetically, I would just continue the sheathing and the siding all the way up into each of these cavities, all the way up to the, the roof sheathing. And I guess in theory that would work all right, but uh, maybe you're noticing that that would be a whole lot of work, you know? So it's a lot of work to cut all the pieces of sheathing to fit inside of here, cut all the pieces of siding to fit inside of here. As I'm doing the house wrap around the whole thing, I've got to cut that to fit up in there, all basically between all these rafters. And the same thing down the side with this blocking. So. I don't really want to do that, and I don't think it's the right thing to do. So there's a couple solutions. I mean, like I said, I mean, I could just leave it, but there'd be a little shelf there that I think would be a home for critters and, and birds and stuff like that. Uh, another thing to do is just to cover from, from the outer edge of the roof here in to the wall with either a plywood or an OSB, probably plywood. And I think that's what, someone could correct me, I think that's what soffit is. Um, I've never known much about soffit really and in houses I mean I've seen it and it seems a little more complex than that right it's usually like a metal or aluminum with a bunch of like perforations in it and stuff I assume for moisture and all that but for this shed I think it can be as simple as plywood and maybe if I want some airflow which I think you're supposed to have I can drill some holes in it and I think they sell kind of 
plugs to put in those holes that are called soffit vents um, that allow the air to travel up. And then I, I'd also, I think, have to drill some holes in this blocking since I purposely put that blocking to close us off. But I think you want airflow in there. So, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. And the good news is I think I can deal with that kind of after the fact, after I've already done the sheathing, the house wrap, and the siding, basically just taking it all up to the rafters and stopping. And then I can handle that cover, that cover right here at the end of all that. that the good news there is that allows me to proceed and get this, this, this OSB being exposed right now is not great. If I were to get a big rainstorm right now, that wouldn't be great to get a bunch of water on here. So I wanna get this paper on as soon as possible. Um, and then at least the paper. Uh, to protect it a little bit so but I've got some holes here for windows too so that's a problem too I want to get the windows in as quickly as possible too so anyway I don't know if I explained before that what I was thought I was gonna do here but I think I was I was way off base on that I don't think that's what I want to do I think I want to put some soffit under here and I think it's gonna be as simple as just plywood with some holes in it um, now you fill them with those those vents basically just you know again if i just cut holes in there that's something for birds to go up into and various critters to crawl up into so i think that's why they they sell or you can cover it with a mesh screen or something just to keep keep the critters out and same deal so all along this side here so that just makes my job a whole lot easier i was not looking forward to trying to cut uh more sheathing cut the siding cut the house wrap to kind of fit up all into all these crevices and all these, all these little uh, cavities. So I think that's the right solution there is to not do that and just take a board and run it and you can just nail it to the, to the rafters. And it's not real structural in any way or anything, it's just a cover. So I don't think it takes much. So that's what I think I'm gonna do.